Okay, my, my formal welcome to everybody. I think I have like seven people and I took up two of the screen uh, because I have this, you know, this iPhone I'm holding. Um, I have my brushes here. So just in case with um, there's any uh, people who want, you know, a demo or want to see a stroke better. I mean, I, I have that ready. But then basically it's a very informal Q&A to have, you know, like if you have any question to ask or if you have something to share or if you are nosy and want to know who else sign up and want to like make some friends and things like that. Um, so um, first of all, I mean, I don't think I've met all of you. Uh, some of them, you know, we met for the first time. Um, so uh, a quick introduction, I'm Jong Lok. Uh, I live in Maryland and um, in the pandemic, it doesn't matter where you live, we're not going out. <laughs> so um, I really appreciate you guys are kind of like the early adopter to um, dive in and join my uh, workshop. So, you know, if you have any comments, if you have any uh, things you want me to, um, for example, do better, you know, do let me know. I think I've met some of you, but not all of you. I mean, there's one real one because I'm holding this phone um, and um, it's, this is my first Zoom meeting. So it's pretty um, interesting. <laughs> so um, anybody have any questions for me or any comment on the, um, on the class so far? I know that, you know, um, I have three classes because I want to test which one would be more popular in a way. Of course, you know, maybe you love floral, but you actually don't like roses, so you will not join anyway. But then basically I have a floral class, which I pick roses. And I have a technique class, which is POMO on Shakishi board. And then I also have one, although I call it POMO on landscape, but basically it's more like a landscape class. And um, I want to see which one is more popular. And so far the uh, result is actually is one third, one third, one third. I have um, very close um, sign up for rose and a POMO and a POMO on, on ink. So therefore, in a way, the interest is all over the place. So it's not like I should focus on making my next class more a technique one or a floral one. But then, um, yes, um, I have a question. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, will you include where we buy the supplies, such as the, the board, the gold okay. shishiki board? Yeah. Um, I, um, I mean, I... I do not have any particular, you know, agreement with any art suppliers. So therefore I don't want, um, I mean, not that I don't want to endorse them, but then, you know, sometimes they may not want me to list them and things like that. But then uh, with your Google Shakishi board, you know, um, they are okay. available everywhere, including Amazon. Um, however, right. local store does have it. So let me um, put out a list and I will email all of you. And then uh, one thing I will actually edit my um, supply list in the, um, in the uh, workshop because um, you know like some of the major supply store that uh, Sumi artists use for example OAS, Awesome Art Supply, Boo Heron and I think SumiStore.com um, they, they all have Shakishi board and then okay. I teach in a local art store in uh, Maryland and uh, because I teach there so therefore years ago when we start um, doing the POMO uh, they actually also import POMO so therefore even locally in Maryland uh, the local art store has has the Shakishi board as well. Um, they are not that cheap, the gold and silver one. Uh, depending on where, what supply you get from, uh, they range from $1.25 to $2.50 a piece. Okay, so um, I actually bought all my sample for the free workshop. And see, this is the one that's come standard. Um, they are around nine and a half inches to 10 and a quarter inch. So it's not a perfect square, it's almost a square. Traditionally, they are all vertical portrait, not, not landscape. However, you know, like we are Americans, we, we really want to do things the way we want it. So, so therefore I have seen artwork, you know, in this orientation, but then if you want a classic look, it's this way. And um, they also come in very different sizes. They, they come in bigger, but th this is the standard one. Um, I will um, give you a list of where you can buy them, but then I, I don't have any particular agreement let me let me email some of the suppliers because um they know the sumi society they know uh they know me so so i i, I cannot guarantee a discount or anything but then at least they will be aware that you know like people will be buying and if they are um interested or you know like things like that you know like um i don't think they install supplies um but then as i say because a lot of time they they sell it in like two pieces you know two pieces together and um the 
the board, um, I bought it in a whole box from Japan. So a whole box is like 30 pieces or something. Uh, but then you have to actually talk to a Japanese importer. And unfortunately, the country still is not, um, I mean, like only a portion of people are English speaking. So therefore, um, if you go to like smaller supply store, you, you have to, uh, how to know how to navigate the language barrier. Yeah. But then, you know, yes, I, I would do that. And um, some of the other classes I'm developing, um, because I know that, you know, like it seems like it's um, everywhere, you know, like people like technique, they also like floral, they also like landscape. So um, I have a, um, a uh, request from someone who took the landscape class, um, they would like more work on the landscape. So therefore, I'm developing classes on the stroke on the landscape because I do know that uh, Sumi society like a lot of floral, and because of that, um, we are not as as. Um, uh, okay, I, I think someone need to mute the phone. <laughs> Okay, um, but um, uh, we don't have a lot of good um, landscape workshop and teachers around. So therefore, um, let me see what I can do on um, doing the landscape class. And then on the technique one, um, I have requests for uh, rice paper crinkling. I'm not sure whether you guys have heard about that. Um, uh, the famous artist uh, Zheng Qi used it on masa paper and developed it into really marvelous watercolor. And if you're familiar with his work, I mean, it's, it's a marvelous way of doing that. But then rice paper crinkling is also, uh, just like Pomo, is also a very Asian method. And I use it for landscape. And this is on rice paper. This is not on masa paper. This is on rice paper. We can do it like that. And then another way I, do, I use uh, rice paper crinkling is for my uh, background, for my, for my floral. So I, I will, I'm developing a class on that. And then on the floral, I am developing a class on sunflower. And I saw that, um, you know, like a, one of our students has a sunflower in the background. So, you know, like sunflower, I think is, is kind of cool. So we'll do that. Um, so, okay. So any, any questions? Uh, may I say something, John? Yes. My, this is Bay Asbridge. I'm from Worcester, Massachusetts. Yes. And uh, I'd like to show you my work and tell oh, okay. you my process because I didn't use uh, Shikishi boards. Um, I did. I couldn't really acquire them. Oh, okay. In time. So this is one. This is a canvas piece. Yes. You can see canvas. Yes. But I used medium on it that will make it like watercolor surface. Mm -hmm. And this is a mat board. I was working on it now this morning actually. But then I applied um, this product, oh, okay. which is it's okay, a Daniel I'm Smith watercolor mm -hmm. ground. Yes. 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 I'm, so I'm we'll give you the ground that will so you can actually apply it to any surface and yes. it will make it absorbent. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like watercolor, and you yes. can see it here on the mat or on the uh, canvas. So this yeah. is an alternative if you you don't want to buy uh, shikishi boards because they're quite expensive. Yeah, yeah, the board is quite expensive. What I've been using, I've been using mat board. Um, okay, this is the one that's in the demo, which is just a piece of mat board, which is kind of like a fall out of the. Um, uh, you know, some of the mat that I cut, but then I also have bigger one. This is also a mat board, and um, I use just red and white, and I have I have larger one, because I mean, the, I, I try using the mat board, it's actually um, a kind of interesting story. Uh, some years ago, I was teaching in the, what we call Chicago Art Expo, um, I think they stopped doing that because of, you know, probably there's not, I mean, the, the venue is quite expensive to put together. And, um, but then uh, I was in the Chicago Art Expo and then I was doing a Pomo lesson on the go board. And I ordered enough go board. However, it was so popular, uh, we have more students than expected. And this is, as, as we find out, I mean, although, you know, like now people are kind of familiar with where it is. Um, it's not something that you can go to a regular art supply store and you can pick them up. And because of that, you know, so, so we have to find alternatives. And then um, I use Medboard and um, it works because the thing is, you cannot use a piece of rice paper and do that. You know, like I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with rice paper. Rice paper is very thin. As a matter of fact, um, one of my um, 
one of the enrollees that did the uh, promo on ink on landscape and she was thinking because she's familiar with pulling the thickened watercolor onto the board I mean she's familiar with this process of um, creating this you know she's familiar with this so she was thinking is to pour the ink onto the rice paper but then it's not the rice paper but it's actually rice paper so what I did is I did I show you how to do this right I mean in the this is demo number one and in the olden times when when I'm talking about the Tang Dynasty when this is created legend has it the artist who did that love to drink and then he would be drunk he would be holding a glass of wine drinking and people ask him for a um, kind of like a landscape or, or the story has it the the emperor was so uh, kind of like admire his work so therefore asked him to go to the mountains uh, kind of like like funded his trip you know like gave him money give him travel expenses and lodging and you know like all the fees and say you know go to the mountain and then you know paint a landscape of the mountain for me and he did but then rumor has it the people come back and say oh did 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 the guy did a did a you know like landscape for me oh not yet he has been drinking you know, he has just been drinking, he is all drunk. So the emperor becomes very angry. So the emperor is like, oh my God, you know, like, you know, he, he, he tricked me. He, he asked me for all this money and then he just wastes his money on drinking and not making me a landscape, right? So the, the emperor summoned him to go to the court and ask him, where's my landscape, right? I mean, you spent all my money and you're still drinking, you know, where's my landscape? So he said, oh, you know, like, your mighty emperor, you know, like, your landscape is here. So therefore he has a big piece of rice paper on the floor and then he was holding some wine in his hand and then on the other hand he has you know like you know ink when we grind it it's actually on a grindstone you know a big pot of ink he would just have a drink I mean like you can visualize it have a drink and then he'll pour the ink onto the big piece of rice paper and then not only that and then you know it's a big piece of rice paper so he would dance on it you know, using his hand, using his feet, you know, move around. And then, and then you know, the legend has it because, I mean, people in the olden time had long hair. So he, and he sort of have a long beard, right? He would use his hair and then he would just use it as a brush and, you know, do this, do that. And then before you know it, it became a landscape. <laughs> I mean, that's the, le that's the legend, okay? I mean, I think it's, I mean, I can visualize it, but basically, if you really want to try this, you can do that. You know, put it on the on the floor and then pour the ink onto it and then make it into an image. But I think for a workshop, it's hard to do that. So therefore, I make it in a smaller scale. And in, in this demo, I actually use a big khaki brush and then make a big ink mark here. And then when it dry, then I show you how to add the, the mountains and the mist and make it into a landscape. Um, and of course, you know, like everybody have their own creative juice. So you may get inspired by something or you may be just looking at the mark and then make it into something else. But that's the pomo and it's not really on a board. So, but then if you really want to, when you have the shakishi board, when you get the paper one or even the gold one, pour the ink onto it and then throw it around, um, you can still have this kind of effect. As a matter of fact, in the olden time, they do that as well. But then, um, not all rice paper are on board, and um, you can try that as well. Yeah. Do you have any more questions? Or oh, by the way, you know, like uh, um, uh, your 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 artwork is great. Uh, maybe we can also add that um, the the watercolor ground, and um, um, because watercolor ground can can finish any surface to make it water soluble. Yeah. So, so we can do that. But then I have tried, what I did is, I tried using a uh, all media canvas board. It says it absorbs all media. Um, I did that, it dry, it looks good. For example, it, say for example, it dry and look like this. So, so I'm like, okay, it's dry, so let me just add something to it. But what happened is because the surface is primed for, for uh, acrylic and oil, so the watercolor doesn't stick to it. So when I add something to it, even the original painting moves so you know so so i don't think it's that permanent and because of that i um you know would not recommend using things that is for you know they claim to be all media and because 
it is still water. So um, when when it's wet again, you know, like with with the surface does not really, really hold on to it with enough tooth, um, it will move around, and you don't want that. Yeah. So I do have a question for um, yes. Beta. beta. Um, using that watercolor ground, um, do you thin it? Because the jar, it's pretty thick coming out of the jar. Do you thin it with water? And what's your experience with? I didn't. I didn't thin it. It's just it leaves marks. It leaves streaks uh, with, because I'm using a brush. Um, so that's the only issue that you really need to soften it as much as you can. And maybe after you apply it, you want to sprinkle some water uh, with a bottle. But really, something really a very thin film of water on top, just to make it perhaps blend and uh, smooth out. Yeah, because so, it is grainy. It know, is. So yeah. It yeah, is. So the, the grain is That's the only thing I don't like about it, that it leaves streaks and you have to be careful yeah, with the streaks. That's but then right. you might apply the streaks to your advantage where actually it might look like if it's um, horizontal, it might look like part of the water or the landscape. Or That's right. Well, can I just share my experience with, you know, doing the class? So I um, actually, I, I did this on Mapboard. So this is the first one. Yes. And... Um, but I, um, it worked because it had too much water. Um, oh, okay. And I was wondering if, you know, if I was going, it, it didn't have water, it, it didn't go underneath, mm -hmm. but, you know, so the mat board tends to work more than, more than the shikishi board. Yeah. Um, so, you know, because this has rice paper, I guess, it's more absorbent, mm -hmm. but this one, because it's smooth, the paper is, it doesn't really absorb it. So it, it does tend to warp. So I just put it under, it's still kind of, you can see it's still warped, yeah. you know? So yeah. what, what I did is in my demo, um, instead of moving the paper around when the paint is poured on it, I think I show you uh -huh. that I have a uh, kind of like a, uh, a mat board or a piece of um, a cardboard and then I stick it onto something bigger and I mean, yeah. the advantage is then your finger would not be touching all the edges because, you know, your hand will get dirty. So the, the, the fall off will fall off. But another thing is, uh, what I find out is that when, when it is stick to a harder piece of board, um, the board also kind of pull it back instead of pulling uh, it up. Okay. But in case, because, um, you know, this is, this is on um, mat board and the same thing, you know, because there's so much paint on it, when it all dry, it has a tendency to warp up a little bit. I have to say that this, I learned it from Jenki Chi. I mean, he said that anything that warp up, you turn it around. Um, I mean, of course, when it's all dry, you don't want to touch it anymore. You turn it around, I mean, the, the background is clean. You s use a spray bottle, not, not really completely wet it, but moisten it a little bit and let it relax. And hopefully it will, it will relax back and then when, when it is kind of dry and with it's not as warp, then of course, you know, the same thing here, put something very heavy on it. And um, in the olden times, you know, we would say it's a telephone book, but now we don't have telephone book. What I find useful is I would have some, some, you know, like thinner books that cover it so it would not make a mark and canned goods, you know, go to the pantry, you know, canned soup, canned, you know, pineapple and whatever, they are very heavy. So what I'll do is I'll put it, um, you know, like on a clean piece of surface and I do it for watercolor paper too. You know, I put it here and then I will, I will have some books because otherwise you don't want a ring mark, right? Put some, put some, you know, like a one inch book or notepad or whatever. And then with you have, um, say with this is the, the um, canned goods, you know, just, just put it on, you know, all the different corners. Um, canned goods are pretty heavy. So, so leave it for one or two days, but don't do it when it's still moist. I mean, like the, the first thing is to use a spray bottle, just moisten it a little bit. So kind of relax it. So let it kind of like with its warp like this, let it kind of relax a little bit. And then when it's dry, um, leave it there for, um, for, for a few days. And sometimes I leave it there for like a whole week. And this is also the same for um, when I mount my uh, painting, I actually have it mounted professionally in Hong Kong. And um, it's hard to melt it flat, so therefore they're always rolled up. And when you have paper rolled up, um, when you open it, it continue to like to curl up like this, right? So what I did is I just make sure my floor is clean. I have a clean piece of paper or, or a blanket. And then I put it all like this. And the same thing here, I have 
first of all, heavy books, I mean like notepad or whatever, and then I put canned goods over it for like two weeks, then, then it will be flat and nice. That, that's how I kind of like uncurve that. And of course, I don't, I don't spray anything on it. <laughs> like, uh, I don't want any moisture anymore. Yeah, so, so that's what I did. Uh, hi, Anne. Okay. So let me see, do I have more people I need to admit? Okay. No. Uh, one right. question. Yes. Does the Shikichi board come in more than one quality? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think so. I think so. As a matter of fact, um, I, uh, I, I learned this POMO method from uh, Diana Khan, who has passed away over 10 years ago. But then she um, imported directly from Japan. So um, I, uh, as a matter of fact, I mean, I actually completely forgot about it until I was um, looking into more samples at the end of the sessions to say, you know, like these are the ones that we made, but then we also have other for inspiration. I was looking at this Jakishi board and I noticed that the goal was so much better than the one that I have here. You see here, this is kind of like a fainted gold color. But then, let me see here, okay. This particular area between the blue and the uh, sunset white, and I'm not sure we can see it, but then this is very intense gold, and that is the goal of the paper. You see a difference? I, I cannot yeah, buy this anymore. Be any color you want. Hmm? Gold is not a standard color. I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> I know that, but then when, when we communicate with the people in Japan, you know, like, uh, since we, I mean, like, it's not our native tongue, um, we will just try to explain what we are want, wanting to buy. And, and you see, you know, like, this goal is so much different than this goal. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think I'm being warned I'm running out of time because um, uh, I um, have the Zoom... Um, on the free account right now. I want to see whether it is worthwhile for me to sign up. So we have to cut this short. I mean, do you have any more questions? You can email me or is once a month good? Do you want it more frequently? Or because would it be too much that, you know, you want it to be later or things like that? Maybe email me on that. Yeah, but but I thank everybody because I'm, I'm getting the warning that um, uh, I <laughs> I have to leave. But thank you, right. everybody, for joining me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.